Hey guys, what's going on? So this has been a highly requested video. We're talking about Dawn in the Hopeness Lab. I'm gonna go over the best abilities for her, the ones you should avoid, and then her three preferences for the advanced abilities. Uh, you might be surprised at some of the things that I say in this video, so stay tuned until the end. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Hopefully you learn something. Okay, what's going on guys? We're gonna jump right into it. Like I said, Dawn is in the Hopeness Lab. Now we've done a lot of these Hopeness Lab videos so far, or a couple rather. So if you're unfamiliar with the format, I will explain the format. And if you like this style uh, and you want it for a specific hero, I'll basically be doing this for all of the heroes. Like I said, this one is by request. Um, so a lot of people actually requested this one. So if you have a hero that you're interested in, you know, having me explain or, or give you guys uh, the best options, please just post them down in the comments. And you know, if, if one's incredibly popular, then I'll probably do it sooner than later. So let's jump into it. I'm gonna show you guys my Dawn first because people love to see what I do. I don't always necessarily do the best thing um, simply just because uh, it's expensive. Um, and I'm not gonna spend 500,000 crystals to get the very, very, very best thing. So that's kind of what I, recommends to you guys. I basically have three categories of skills in the Hopeness Lab. Category number one is abilities that if you see them, you immediately take it. You take it and you lock it. Category two are abilities that you, there are better options for sure. If you get it, you can kind of decide if you want to keep it. If you're a lower spender, you're probably going to, you know, urge more to keeping it. If you're a very, very high spender, then you might wanna re-roll it for something else. And then category three is just completely ignore it. If you get it, just skip it. It doesn't matter if it's gold and the next thing you get is like white. It just, just get rid of it. So that's kind of how I do things. So the way mine's set up is I have gold tactical resistance plus 30, gold group resistance plus 15, gold resistance plus 30, and then purple killer or magician. So we'll come back to, to, to that in a minute. But first I'm gonna go over the basic abilities. So the, the key thing to note about this is that <clears throat> Dawn is pretty simple to set up for her basic abilities. And what you set up for Dawn can be applied to most other heroes. Not most other heroes, to other healer heroes. So healer heroes are interesting in the fact that statistics don't really benefit them much at all. In a lot of games, might, or like the equivalent of might, would increase the amount of healing done by by dawn in last shelter there is no way to increase the amount of healing done there is a method but we'll we'll come back to that in a minute but the basic statistics there is no like healing increase so what does that leave you with well basically just being the tankiest you can possibly be so one you don't die so you can continue to heal and two if you take less damage uh you lose less power, which is basically how the battle at the end is determined. The winner is determined by whoever loses less power. So with that said, it's not too important. The skills aren't too important. This isn't like a hero that really matters whether or not she has perfect roles or real or bad roles. It's not going to make a huge difference, honestly, but basically just stack tanky stuff. So that means stack resistance plus 30, HP plus 10, take it right away, tactical resistance, take it, skip pretty much everything else. And then I'll get to the groups in a bit. So skip might, skip tack might, damage, all the siege, all the counters, normal attack damage, skill damage, skip. Just, just there, there's absolutely zero reason to have them on your base. If you have one of these gold ones, it's basically worse than if you have a green resistance. It, it, it just is. So pu to put it in that perspective, I would rather take a green resistance over, uh, you know, a gold skill damage plus 10. Now let's get into the group stuff because the group stuff is a little bit more interesting and some people might disagree with what I'm going to say about the group stuff. So normally a group, how a group works, like group tactical resistance plus 15. This basically gives you 45 tactical resistance in your squad because you get 15 on every single every single hero. Regular tactical resistance gives you plus 30%. So it's just on Dawn. 
Now, in this scenario, I honestly recommend regular tactical resistance over group or regular resistance over group resistance. Simply because there are basically two ways to counter Dawn. The first way is to block healing. So somebody like Wrath, um, he blocks healing. Somebody like Scorpion blocks healing. That's going to be the first way to counter Dawn. Uh, because if she's not healing, she's doing literally nothing. The other way to counter Dawn is to kill Dawn. I mean, easier said than done, of course. But she's not going to really have any like super, uh, you know, damage reduction abilities or anything like some of the other tanks have. So like Glutton, for example, right? Glutton has a damage reduction ability. Dawn doesn't really have those. So she is not really a tank. She's not. Yeah, she's not really a tank like you would assume most people are. She's just basically a healer with some high resistances. So you can kill her fairly easily. And that's that's a really, really good way to counter Dawn squads is just killing her. What that means is if you have 30% resistance, that's more beneficial than if you only have 15% resistance on Dawn and let's say 15% resistance on Scorpion. So that's just one thing. To, it, it's not much of a difference. I would take group resistance, certainly. Um, I would honestly take any of the group stuff, except for maybe group tactical might. It's not that important. And I would probably pass on group tactical might. I wouldn't pass. I would take it, but I would probably re-roll it eventually. Other than that, you can take everything else. I would I would lock in group might, lock in group resistance, lock in group tactical resistance. Now on a lot of other heroes, I'm gonna recommend like group resistance over regular resistance. It's just in this one particular case, Dawn dies a lot, honestly. Dies more more than a lot of other heroes. So or a lot of other like tanks do. So just stacking pure resistance is better on Dawn. So that's a long-winded explanation to say that just stack tank. It doesn't really matter. Now let's talk about the advanced abilities. So in a similar fashion, he, she doesn't have that. It's not that big of a deal whatever advanced ability you have. It really doesn't matter too much. And honestly, if you just run four resistances, that's okay. Or like, you know, four three resistance, one HP, blah, blah, blah. Four gold tanky stats is definitely an option on Dawn. However, what should you not go? So skip Lucky 2. Um, the reason is that uh, she doesn't have, it, it does, she's not affected by this. Skip Lucky 5, her fifth ability is actually a combat skill, but it's 100% chance to trigger. So, I mean, 100 for 105% is uh, still going to trigger once every round. So skip lucky five. Skip lucky eight. Her eighth ability is, is not usable for it. Skip tox erosion. You can't even get it on her, so no point in worrying about it. Skip strike combo. Skip leadership. Generally skip leadership. Um, leadership's an okay option for sure, but there are simply better options. However, if you take leadership, it's not going to be a big deal because like I said, the advanced abilities don't matter too much on Dawn. Insight is honestly a decent option for Dawn because generally the combos that she runs in are pretty susceptible to, to CC. So, and including Dawn, she's, she's fairly susceptible to CC. However, it's not a huge deal if she gets CC'd because what happens is she gets CC'd, she doesn't heal for one round, you take damage, the next round you just heal it up. So it's not terribly huge to have Insight, but it's, it's not a bad option. Skip Enhanced Counterattack. Skip enhanced splash damage. Skip self defense instinct. Um, this is simply just worse, in my opinion, than insight um, in, in most scenarios. So just go ahead and skip it. You can take temporary preparedness. However, it's not going to be the best option in this case because oftentimes um, she's going to heal more than temporary preparedness, but you can certainly take it. It's never going to be a bad option. Now, efficient treatment, this is kind of the one that people ask about. What the hell is efficient treatment doing? Basically, all efficient treatment does, like I said in the very beginning, or not in the very beginning, but in the beginning of the video, I said there are no ways to increase healing. This is the only exception to the rule. So efficient treatment increases healing received. And it does say troops received recovery, but the grammar in English in here is, is horrible. All it means is if... 
you are getting healed. So your squad is getting healed, let's say 5,000. Now it's going to be getting healed by 5,007. So yes, that's all that this means. The 7%, don't look at this number as like, oh my God, I. this is 7% or like, well, this is blue. So it, at gold, it's like 20% or 30% or whatever. It's not literally going to be, you're not getting healed 30% more. Um, the, the statistics in this game, the percentage numbers basically are always additive. So you're pretty much just going to get healed uh, for like, the way that it works is it has a recovery effect. So a recovery effect of like 200, for example. Uh, there are some heroes that have that. That's going to heal you for about like five, six, seven thousand. This is going to be two hundred seven, so it's going to heal you for like fifty five hundred to, you know, seventy five hundred or whatever. So that that's all that that means. It's not a literal seven percent of seven thousand. So efficient treatment. <laughs> going back to Dawn, um, efficient treatment is not how much healing you will give. It's just how much healing you will receive. So just keep that in mind. Um, it's not a bad option on Dawn, certainly, because she does heal herself as well. Um, so you can take it for sure. It's a decent option. Unarmed Storm is basically entirely useless. Both of the conversions useless at Greed. Nope. Uh, she does literally zero, zero damage, so she's going to heal for zero damage. Zero times zero. Figure it out. Hourglass completely skip. Surprise attack skip. Come prepared is an option for sure. It's one of the lower options that I would take, but it's there, I guess. Um, but I would generally pass on it. Distant Strike, pass. Back from Dust Door, pass. Um, I skipped over Potential Unleashed because it's a interesting one. I'll come back to it. Um, Actually, I don't want to. I don't want to make this video too long. So you can go ahead and take potential unleashed. It's not going to be your your number one option, but I'll I'll show that in the preferences anyway. You can take it for sure. Full of vigor skip, preemptive strike skip, elite squad skip, reaper scythe skip. Defensive attack is an interesting option as well. Basically, the way that defensive attack works is if you're in the front row, you you have damage resistance. If you're in the back row, you deal more damage. Nine times out of 10, Dawn is in the back row or in the middle row, meaning I would say probably 10 times out of 10, Dawn is in the back row or the middle row, meaning defensive attack is, is entirely useless. So a lot of people have this on their Dawns, but it's it's not really a good option because you're never gonna, really going to put her in the front row. Endless Trial, it's okay. Um, I would generally skip it uh, in favor of Potential Unleashed. Potential Unleashed is basically just better than Endless Trial, but it, it's okay. Um, you're going to stack up that resistance, the might is completely useless though, so you're really only getting like a half of an advanced ability, but it, it's fine. It's fine on her. Killer Magician is definitely a good option, and skip auto strike. So now let's go to the preferences. So the preferences is basically the, the three abilities that you want to get the most. Um, you, you'll set them to whatever you want the most. So in my opinion, I'll go through this a little bit quickly because I, I hadn't realized how long this video is. Killer Magician is, is like always on basically everything a really really good option you're going to get resistance you're going to take it away from the enemy you're going to take away their might so you're getting basically three benefits from this one ability her having extra might doesn't really matter but you're taking it away from the enemies which is always a good thing so killer magician is definitely good potential unleashed i would honestly take probably but there are a few others that you can take um, instead so temporary preparedness, again, you can take. It's it's going to be fine. Efficient treatment is also going to be fine. Um, maybe not my preferred, but it's going to be okay. Insight, you can definitely take. Um, if you find that you're getting counter CC'd a lot and, and losing because of that, you can take insight. But what I would run is basically Killer Magician, Potential Unleashed, and uh, Temporary Preparedness. I, I don't know why that was so hard to think of. The reasons for this is you're basically just going to survive uh, as long as possible. So that's about it as far as the preferences go. Again, I just want to stress it's not too important. The advanced abilities aren't too important. Going for four golden basic abilities is totally cool. Um, so if you don't have a lot of decay energy, I wouldn't. I would honestly probably just go for four golden abilities, and you'll you'll be completely fine. Um, so. That's about it, guys, on Dawn. Hopefully, you've enjoyed the video. Hopefully, you've uh, learned a thing or two. 
You can apply this knowledge into Snowy onto a lot of other healer heroes as well, so take it as you will. Some Sometimes, you know, especially the advanced abilities do change from hero to hero, but uh, you can take some of the information and, and hopefully apply it to, to the other heroes you guys have. All right, that's about it. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. I will catch you on the next one. See you soon. Stay healthy, stay happy, stay having fun. Wake up early mornings, late nights, hopping on a different flight. What's the meaning of life? Hey, wake up, same ish, different day. Make a wish, call it pray. Am I sick? Am I okay? Hey, stay up.